everybody. Uh, on Sunday, I was talking about Gideon, and I just feel it's such a neat story, an important lesson for us, especially we want to be free. And this is Gideon's story shows how your harvest gets stolen. Because many people, you know, you're doing good, things are going well, you know, and then, then suddenly everything goes off. And it happens sometimes in families over and over again, just when they get to the place of breakthrough or harvest, something happens. Well, this is what happens to the children of Israel, that they were seven years under the bondage of the Midianites. So the Midianites would come in like locusts into their land, kill everything, and get all their grain. And so they would, the, the Israelites would be hiding in the caves and all kinds of stuff. And then we come to, and a prophet came by and said, listen, the reason this has happened is that it, God delivered you from Egypt. He did all these things. But he told you not to be afraid or to bow to the gods of the Midianites in your land. And of course, they did. So along comes Gideon and says he's hiding his, his wheat, thrashing his wheat out. And a man appears to him and uh, says, Gideon, you know, brave man. Gideon, great man. And Gideon's going, can you talk to me? He says, I'm the least in the house, I'm, I'm the smallest tribe, and I'm the least in that tribe, the tribe of Manasseh. And uh, God just kept, the angel kept talking to him, and he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, you have to prove it, I'm going to go get a meal, you know, a, a de dedicated meal, and I'll be right back. So he goes and gets his goat, you know, and some, some water and a, a bowl of soup, and he comes back, and this angel's still standing there patiently. And the angel says, put it on that rock there. So he puts the stuff on the rock. It's supposed to be like a ceremonial kind of thing. And the angel put forth the stick that was in his hand, sword, who knows, and it just consumed it. Well, then Gideon got freaked out, you know, and he says, oh, no, it's going to kill me. And he says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. And then he was gone. God said, don't be afraid. Well, it's interesting in this story. Here's this angel. But it also says God is actually speaking to him. This is so amazing. Like this was before uh, Jesus paid the price that we could be saved. So his spirit was not alive unto God. So God was literally coming upon him and speaking to him. And he was still this wimpy guy. You know what I mean? And so he says, well, God, if this is, if, if you're going to be with, so he goes and says the spirit of God came upon him. He blew the trumpet and people started to gather. Uh, you know, God anointed him for it. And then he still says, well, God, I'm going to put out this fleece. So, you know, I put out this sheep fleece and if it's dry in the morning and everything else is wet, I'll know you're sending me. And he's already got man, man, he's already, God's already doing stuff, you know, and he's still, still, God is very patient with us. He really is. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? So he says, well, one more time, you put the fleece out and if the fleece is wet in the morning and the ground is dry, then I'll know. And it's so interesting that once he started to obey, God anointed him. And then once he started to listen and to deliver, get delivered from fear, God began to give him instruction. And began, showed him how, you know, I can't remember, man, I think it was 35,000 men came for the battle. And God says, too many. They'll think that Israel's won that and not me. So he, sa he, said, any, he says, any man that's afraid, you can go home. So it left 10,000 people, 10,000 guys. So, and that was a small group compared to the, the enemy. And then he said, no, still too many. You know, we think we need to have a mass. We think we need to have everything going for us. All we need is God going for us because he can change things. He can strategize. He can do things that we don't know ahead of time. So he says to them, okay, have them all go to the pond and, and drink. And he says, and all the ones who lap the water up will keep them. All the ones who put their face in the water, send them home. The reason being, when you lap it up, you're watching. See, very, very watchful, you're watching. So anyway, 700, they ended up with 700 men against this mass of people, and God started showing them how to beat them. He even showed them a dream. He even had them go down into the camp and listen to a dream that one of the guy, enemies had, uh, you know, of a barley roll, lying, coming down the hill and hitting the tent. And, and the guy says, interpreted it and says, oh, that means Gideon's going to win. Why, barley rolls, cheap, cheap grain? Gideon's going to win. We're going to lose. So it brought fear, but it brought boldness to Gideon 
God gave him instruction. He gets, says to all the guys, you 700, get a trumpet in your hand, get a dish with a light in it, with a candle in it, so that he's got this, this container. And he says, okay, when I tell you, blow the trumpet and say, in the name of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. He says, and then crash, smash the jar, smash the jar, get the light out, light up the light. And so did the enemy. It looked this massive noise coming from the hills. And they freaked out and they ran and they started killing each other. And then other people started gathering. It's interesting when you have the courage of one that it spreads to other people, spreads to other people. But here's the thing, that really Gideon had to come to a place, stop blaming God for his problems, because it was the sin of Israel that caused the problems, and that God was wanting to spare them, God was wanting to break them, so they break them free. So the interesting thing is Midian, the name, the Midian actually means contention. It means arg being argumentum, it, it, it's, it's the opposite of peace. And you know, when the angel was there and disappeared, Gideon says, I'm gonna call this place peace. Listen, peace is the opposite of arguments, being uh, arguments and contention and fighting. Listen, your harvest can be destroyed because of contention. Your harvest can be destroyed because the enemy comes in, that Midianite spirit comes in, and people start arguing and being silly with each other. Or someone comes in and offends you. And you, in your mind and even out of your mouth, you begin to curse. I don't mean swear words. I mean the things out of your mouth are all negative. All negative. Instead of blessing. So I, I want to I encourage you today. You're letting the Midianites in. Or maybe you're acting like one of them. And that you bring contention. And where God wants to, and that when God right now wants you to have a harvest, that you're so caught up, the negative around you, and that you're not blessing, that you're not proclaiming the blessing of God and blessing other people. Listen, today, today, we just bind that Midian spirit from operating in our lives, that we will not follow after contention. We will not. You know, it says, the scripture says that, um, that there can't be contention or strife without pride. Whoa, I remember reading that. Wow. So there can't be contention without pride. Pride is an operation. Listen, we need to humble ourselves before God, get hold of him, proclaim his love for us, proclaim that he has given us a harvest for his kingdom and for ourselves that he would want us to prosper. So today, even a harvest of people, even a harvest in your children, listen, today, today, we bind that Midianite spirit and we say, peace be still to troubled waters. We bind that wind, we bind the wind of that Midianite spirit and we say, peace be still to troubled waters in your home, in your business, that which concerns you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Peace to you. Amen.